So is this like, uh, if I went on a, like three dates with someone and like on the third date they're like, I've got to tell you, I'm Banksy. <laughs> Can you imagine? We're four out there watching Shakespeare Jones. Oh yeah, what does Seven think of this? Well, it's a uh, cat, I guess, of sorts. You don't like art? Yeah. Sure, I like art. Art's fine when it's good. But I didn't see the point in art that doesn't make me feel anything. I love music because it's all about the moment. The experience and emotion. Hmm. This doesn't look like my old cat, so it doesn't make me feel much to me now. What kind of cat? When I was a kid, my cat was black. I called him Poto, which means grape in Korean. <laughs> His eyes were round like grapes. We'd play tug, running across the apartment. We gave him to a stranger when we moved away to Korea, though. Uh, I hope we had a happy life, but I'll never know. No point in wasting time on it. We have work to get back to. Okay. Okay. We're gonna go on a date with Seven to the movies, presumably. How about a movie? I could go for horror action. Um, let's go to a horror movie. Yeah, okay. How about we see the dunge? <laughs> it's showing at 6.30 most nights. I heard it's good. Let me know. Yeah, let's go. Meet you inside. Don't bring the fan club. I will not bring the fan club, Seven. You, you and Seven find your seats as the movie starts. The feature film features a group of teens lost in a darker, bloodier dunge than you've ever seen. <laughs> Yeesh, and none of them can turn into swords? Bad strategy, kids. The monsters kill the most annoying teen first. Before long, the sidekick dies, and Seven frowns. Eventually, all but one of the teens dies horribly, and the survivor narrowly escapes. The lights come up, and you leave the theater. Aw, oh, man, maybe I set my expectations too high. I mean, it was fine. Hmm. What did you think? Um... I like the adrenaline. <laughs> Your heart rate goes up watching stuff like this. You, the Dunch hero. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Would you like to offer a gift? Yeah, I would. What should we offer him? Maybe a, a silver ring? He liked that a lot. Oh, a silver ring? That's actually kind of cool. Thanks. Nice. Uh, yeah, we'll do that one. Uh, Olivia! <laughs> Listen, Olivia, you didn't like me, and now I am dating this really cute K-pop star, and you just have to be like this. Oh, wow. Hi, guys. I totally didn't know you'd be hey. here. Seven makes a face as if pleading uh, silently for rescue. Okay, bye, Olivia. I haven't seen you around the cafe lately, but I want to give you something. Seven, I... I wrote this personal yeah. letter. All right, I'll take it. Fans are important to me. Uh huh. Er, no, that is. Sorry. Can you deliver it for me? What a bitch. Seven blinks. It's for Sungwoo, my ultimate bias. Can you give it to him for me, pretty, pretty, please? He stares at her for several seconds. Nuh uh. <laughs> Seven walks away. Huh? Wow, fame sure has gone to his head, huh? Olive is holding an envelope. Sungwoo is written on it with hearts for O's. I'll just have to figure out where Sungwoo is saying again. Uh, who's Sungwoo again? <laughs> <laughs> is that supposed to be sarcasm or is it irony? Everyone on the planet knows about Blade Generation's lead singer, silly. Hmm. She sighs dreamily and wanders away. Okay. Lady. Yeah, understandable. You okay, bud? Had to go. Sorry. Talk to you later. Bye. We dunge and we date. And we dunge and we date. That's how this works. In case you were curious. I'm tempted to heal now, but we're gonna wait. Oh, I haven't done this with him. 
Hmm, doesn't even look freezer burned. It looks fresh, handmade even. Uh, but uh, I'm uh, not supposed to. Like, ice cream's like the best way to gain weight. That and rice. Okay, who cares? Actually, this explains a lot about my weight gain. I eat a lot of ice cream and a lot of rice. Hmm. My agent can fire me if I gain even two pounds, so I care, sort of. Plus, there'd be drama. When Sung Woo gained weight once, girls cried and cried. Maybe there wouldn't be drama this time because uh, I'm not important like Sung Woo. I'm not sure it would be even worse. Even way, no ice cream for me. Not today. For now, we have work to do. Do I just give Sung Woo all the gifts? We'll see if he likes this. Nope. Nope, he didn't like it. Recipes. <sighs> Alrighty. At least we'll get a date out of this. <laughs> oh, two dates. Still thinking about that movie. The characters were so stupid. Don't go alone when there's monsters. Fictional characters make the worst decisions. It does make a good story. Boo! So if someone writes my biography, will they make me look dumb to sell more copies? I hope not. Oh well. That's not how biographies work. People don't. <laughs> people don't usually spice up biography biographies. Okay, the muffin stench is gone, mostly. Want to come see my work some evening? Sounds good. Can't wait. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's try not to break her, okay? I may need a friend who has owned her, too, if I want any chance with Isaac. You turn onto the side street that houses Valeria's art studio, but the smile on your face drops off as you see Jake walk out. Um, I'm hiding from him. I am not confrontational. You duck into the shop doorway as he passes, muttering to himself. You watch him walk away and then turn to look at Valeria's door. You should just leave Jake alone and go in. Yeah, you will. Any time now. Do I follow Jake? Yeah, I follow Jake. <laughs> you follow Jake through town, focusing all of your energy on the remaining undetective. A few people are standing and looking at something on the side of the mall. Jake watches them with a smile. You edge closer and... Beautiful, isn't it? You nearly leap out of your skin as Jake appears by your elbow. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so, so sorry. You, did I startle you? Look at his creepy face! What the heck? I'm fine. Huh. He grins like a shark, all teeth and unpleasant promise. Oh, poetic game. Look at you. Fine. Even I have to admit you are that. Fuck you. Gross. So tell me, Shakespeare, why are you following me? He reaches out to grab your wrist, and that's when you see it. Paint splotches on his sleeves in the exact color of the graffiti. He follows your gaze to his sleeve and to the mural. Shit, so... You found us out. Us? Who's us? Aw, oh, hell, you better come with me. <sighs> I'm not, like, gonna fit you with a pair of cement shoes. Relax. Just... Let's just go to the studio and talk with Valeria, okay? Six years in and I get caught out by my girlfriend's current... Whatever you are. Yep, current! Okay. Wow, you're an asshole, huh? I like that about you. Fuck you! <laughs> He grabs you by the sleeve and half marches, half drags you back to the studio. It's closed up. Jake gives you another unsettling smile and pulls out a key. Huh. That's right. I have a key. You're such a jerk. I feel very uncomfortable. He unlocks the door and slides it open, all but shoving you inside. Am I being kidnapped? Oh, you're here. And you're with Jake. Huh? 
Okay, what the hell? <sighs> Understandable. <sighs> Shakespeare saw me coming out of the studio and followed me. Okay, followed is a harsh word, but an accurate word. I told you I would speak to Jake. I told you to let it go. You could have just come talk to me and talk <sighs> about it. I would have introduced you to Jake properly. You could have pretended to like each other while secretly seething like adults. That's not all. Shakespeare knows about the graffiti at the mall. Say the paint on my sleeve. I still don't know much. I was gonna tell you about all of that today. I was gonna take you to the mall myself and tell you about the roses of Venice. What? When did you decide this? I told you I was thinking about it. Thinking about it is different from deciding. Ugh. Look, Jake, can we save it for later? I'm yelling at Shakespeare just now. Jake tips you a commiserating smile while, which sharpens just at the last okay. moment. Okay. Sure, Valentine. We can argue anytime you like. Give me a call. With that, he sweeps out, leaving an awkward silence in his wake. I'm sorry. Um. <sighs> I just I really wish I had gotten to tell you myself. I wanted to share it with you, not have you figure it out. I couldn't know that. Well, the secret's out anyhow. I suppose that's a good thing. I don't know if it sounds like much, but it was my whole life. Jake and Jessica and I were the roses of Venice. Still huh. are. We paint our beauty and truth on walls and monuments and street all over the world. Istanbul, Paris. So is this like... Uh, if I went on a, like, three dates with someone, and, like, on the third date, they're like, I've got to tell you, I'm Banksy. <laughs> Can you imagine? Istanbul, Paris, Tokyo, New York, London, Shanghai, and now Verona Beach. Our last job all together was the Louvre. It got us a lot of attention. I think we're wanted by Interpol now. Jessica wanted more of it. The more dangerous it got, the better. <sighs> I just needed to get away from it all, you know? Lie low. No chance of running into Jessica on Main Street. This is the opposite of her scene. <laughs> I think I could really get to like it here, you know? Uh, so, Edro, are you saying that neither of them told you that they are Banksy? Thanks. Unfortunate. It's kind of a weird thing to confess. Maybe it was easier this way. Sure, I will give her a gift of a cupcake. Oh, thank you, really. We walk home the long way past the Ciao. Mural. People are still taking pictures with it and talking about it as the sun goes down. This is really beautiful. But Jake is like the creepiest guy ever. Thanks so much for watching this part of Boyfriend Dungeon. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like. Uh, tell me who's your favorite person so far. And uh, I'll see you next time. Toodles.